somebody, you had to, yes, from the Republican presidential field this year to be your vice president. There was a national crisis, and there had to be a unity ticket. For the good of the nation, and those were your choices, those 15 men and women, mm. who would you choose? It, you know, there are Republicans I could pick, just none of them. Okay. <laughs> As Republicans gear up for their next national showdown, Democrats are busy fawning about Hillary Clinton with difficult questions such as, what language would you want to learn? Riveting stuff that is all part of the selection process leading us to this edition of The Political Animal. Let's begin with a staff writer for The Federalist who deserves battle pay for being too close to the D.C. Beltway, Bree Payton, and the American Principles Project Executive Director of the Latino Partnership, Alfonso Aguilar. I want to thank you both for joining us. Bree, I'm going to start with you because here we have at this Democratic Forum, Rachel Maddow asking some of the absolute stupidest, most useless questions I think you could possibly ask a candidate for the President of the United States. This was embarrassing, Bree. Yeah, I certainly agree. But I think that Hillary Clinton definitely missed an opportunity to name Carly Fiorina as a potential veep. I think that <laughs> Fiorina would be, <laughs> I think that, you know, the two of them together could really have a conversation about feminism and kind of approach what it, what would really be helpful for women in the workplace. Well, let's look at it that way, because <laughs> from a feminist side of things, if you were to look at it, the questions were so fawning, they were so soft, and there was a, an admonition at the front, oh, don't worry, these aren't going to be tough. That's insulting to women in general. It almost says, well, I guess maybe, don't worry, Mrs. Clinton, you're, you're just a woman. We want to go nice and easy on you. If I was a woman, I'd be tremendously insulted by that. Yeah, I certainly agree. But I think that these kind of softball, woman-oriented questions isn't anything new. I think that she gets them a lot. You know, a few months ago, she got a question about how she is able to get ready in the morning and have enough time to be able to look nice. So I think we definitely are seeing kind of a pattern of these pandering you know, women speak questions from the media to Hillary Clinton. Um, and as you said, it's kind of sickening and insulting to women. I look good every time before I go on the air because faith takes care of my makeup. There you go. Alfonso, <laughs> let me come to you because one of the questions asked was, what language would you want to lose? And Mrs. Clinton says Spanish. I want to make sure that I can talk to them in their language or something along those lines. Come on, even that's a little bit insulting. That, that's not going to do anything to grab Latino voters, is it? Of course not. That's so ridiculous. And now she's saying she's a champion for, Im for immigrants. She's, she never talked about the issue when she was in the Senate. Look, we have a double standard here uh, by the liberal media. We know that they're trying to very hard to, to make Republicans look like uh, we're idiots. Uh, and then uh, with, when they have their, their, their debates, you know, they want to show Democrats as being very profound and deep. And, you know, Rachel Maddow moderating a Democratic debate. Give me a break. I mean, that's ridiculous. Uh, let's go ahead and get on to something a little more substantive here, at least. Donald Trump hosted Saturday Night Live on Saturday night. Got great <laughs> ratings. People are saying, yes, it was funny. No, it wasn't. But, Alfonso, let me ask you. There was a tremendous amount of discussion about protests beforehand, and even the actors may be getting involved. Fair to say a lot of those protests fizzled. Do you really think they'd make any difference anyway? No, because I, I frankly don't think the majority of uh, Hispanic voters have a problem with Donald Trump being on SNL. Look, I, I'm not a Trump supporter. I, I, I think his comments are offensive to Hispanics. But having said that, I don't think he's blatantly racist. I mean, in, on SNL, they've had Al Sharpton, uh, Sinead O'Connor. So I, I just don't I, I, I don't I don't see the issue. Uh, actually, I thought he was kind of funny. So I think he belongs uh, he, he's, a, he's a better fit for uh, SNL than for the GOP primary. <laughs> I would tend to agree. And when you say Al Sharpton, the word racist just explodes from the head. But that's something else we can get to at a different time. Bree, let me switch up here. In a meeting today with U.S. President Barack Obama, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was talking about the fact that he is still committed to a two-state solution between Israel and Palestine. Here's his comments. We have not given up our hope for peace. We'll never give up our hope for peace. And I remain committed to a vision of peace, of two states for two peoples, a demilitarized Palestinian state that recognizes the Jewish state. Free the president and Bibi Netanyahu are getting together. Do you think that they will really be able to come close on any issues whatsoever here? Or is there just simply too much damage the president has done? 
Right. Well, I think that, you know, Netanyahu definitely has kind of a higher stake in these um, negotiations and these discussions with Obama because his country safely is directly on the line, you know, as a result of this deal that Obama negotiated. And I think it's really clear that, you know, Obama kind of neglected a lot of Israel's interests when negotiating the deal. And he was really kind of just pandering to what and willing to do and accept whatever terms Iran wanted. So I think there's definitely, you know, a lot of bad blood kind of between the two. So hopefully we're able to see some good come out of this after all. 60 seconds. I have one other thing I want to get to get a quick comment from both of you here. The president, by the way, said today, actually in an email sent over the weekend to the Democratic Party, that he is going to one thing he still wants to do is gun control. Yet in his email, Bree, he didn't lay out a specific strategy. So do you think the president really has a strategy or is he just throwing it out there to try and garner some favor? Well, I think a lot of the gun control rhetoric that we see coming out of the left um, a lot of times isn't really clear or doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, a lot of times they decry gun show loopholes or other things of that nature, which, you know, quite frankly, don't really exist. There isn't a gun show loophole. So a lot of times when they attack or go after guns, you know, or seek these gun control measures, it's oftentimes... Uh, it doesn't make any sense. 20 seconds to so you, Alfonso. Do you think you really get anything done? No, it's not going to go anywhere. The grand failure of Barack Obama is not leading, not working with Congress. Uh, he has a problem with Republicans, but he's also had a problem with Democrats. And I think Hillary's already signaling to the nation that basically she would be, she would have the same uh, confrontational relationship with Congress when she calls Republicans uh, uh, her enemies. So uh, that's not going to go anywhere. She's just trying to please her, his yep. uh, liberal base. Exactly, and exactly what we need. Somebody else who can't get the job done in Washington. Gee, what a stunner. Alfonso Aguilar, Bree Payton, I want to thank you both for joining us. We will talk again soon. And let's remind you, when it comes down to talking, the Republicans are going to be talking tomorrow night. We will talk right after that. Tuesday, 11 o'clock Eastern Time, our post-debate special. Join us for all the analysis right here on Newsmax.